Let's, let's start at 7.06, according to my timepiece. All right, so introductions. Um, hey, man. Gupta. Michael Taylor. Alex Barnier. Long Hulkren. Derek Lai. Okay. And Christine Nowak. Christine, good. Good. Um, you don't have your mask on. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's lucky. Really? That's why I can't do it. I was I was in my mask all day today. I'm like done. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for dialing it up anyways. Um so we do have minutes that I sent out to everybody uh, from April 8th. That's the last time we met. We didn't meet in the middle of the summer. We were still doing the pandemic thing and there wasn't any really pressing business. Anybody have any comments on the minutes or any changes or anything that needs to happen? Otherwise, we'll just say um, that we reviewed them, no objections. Move to accept the meeting. Okay. Whatever. Herman, you'll second. I second. Okay. And Christy also noted it with a thumbs up. Okay. So, anyone opposed? All right, we're good. All right, so I usually try to have a, a WRTD update. Um, I was just looking to see if I had gotten an email because uh, I talked to the executive director last week and uh, she said, oh yeah, we have a lot of news and we'd be happy to share it. So she handed it off to one of her staff people and he said he wanted to make a presentation. Um, I don't see anybody in that. But I don't see that in. I sent him all the Zoom meeting stuff and since Christy got in, then yeah, I'm assuming good. it works. So, um, the things they told me was that they were changing some routes and they wanted to get some feedback. And so I don't know what they're planning, so we can't do that. Uh, I assume they'll send me something eventually and I can forward it to everyone. And if you have comments, you can forward it back to me and I'll get it to them. I mean, WRTD has its own board of directors and we have representatives on it from the town. So we're, we're not really in the loop. I just, you know, we need to, we occasionally can give them some input, but they're not here right now. The other thing is you mentioned, and I just heard that they're planning on doing something different um, in the Four Corners area. Yeah. Um, right now there's a pending application on the properties of the Holiday Mall and also what was formerly known as Willard's. Uh, it's currently Central Canine. Uh, right now, there's a um, project before planning and zoning. Uh, they should be having a public hearing in the next two weeks, uh, which they'll be opening. And it is right now currently the terminus of the WRTD North line, so the stores line. So at that location is where the bus actually turns around in the parking lot of the Holiday Mall and then starts returning southbound. Um, so what they are doing, the developers been in discussions with WRTD, we're still seeking some written confirmation from them, but they have established a um, bus stop actually in the development itself. So it would allow for full turnaround in a, um, on a roadway. In the Holiday Mall? Is that what you're talking about? Or? That's correct. So it actually be within the development that's being proposed in the Holiday Mall. Oh, location. the Holiday Mall is coming up with a new... Uh... Yeah, if this new development ends up being approved uh, by planning and zoning. Okay, in new development. Okay. And that's most likely because now it's sewered and they can do something. That's correct. Higher use of the property. Yeah, more intense usage of the property. Right, right. Cool. All right. Well, maybe they'll, they'll, they'll come in later, but in, in, in the event they don't, we'll just move on. So, um, the status of the bicycle pedestrian plan is still kind of dormant. Um, there was a draft that was prepared uh, two or three years ago uh, by myself and, and with a little help from, from the town. Um, and um, the planning department has never actually reviewed it. They always seem to be putting out fires. Uh, and so 
what I did when I, I came in, I met with the, the new town manager and I said, well, we will update it as far as we can. Um, and uh, Derek's the people are, are uh, doing the illustrations. There's some plaques, you know, where that show where the, where the existing things are and where the proposed things are. Mm -hmm. But we have to update it because some of the things that were in the draft from two, three years ago have already been done. Mm -hmm. We got to take those out and so on. So that's where it is. It stands. Um, the reason this is important is because Mansfield was supposed to renew its bicycle friendly community application this past fall. And uh, because of the pandemic, you know, we had written in saying, you know, this is going to be tough because the town is on a limited basis and offices aren't fully functional and all that kind of stuff. So they actually got enough of the of those kinds of requests to where they took everybody that was due last fall and said it, it's next fall. So that gives us a little bit of reading room. But we really do need to get our bicycle pedestrian plan before the planning and zoning commission and reviewed and have you know the public hearings or whatever and adopt it. And it is just a plan. You know, it's not a, you have to build this in 19, I mean, in 2026. It says, these are the things that we would like to do. And uh, the town should work towards that. And there are some nice things that the town, for example, I learned from Derek recently that they're trying to get some grant funds mm -hmm. through the pandemic shared funds yeah. from the feds to put in a path, an off-road path, or at least a big bike lane from four corners up to the top of the hill, which has never been in our plan because of Discovery Drive has, has the bike lanes, but people don't always do what, you what know, exists. what is it? They, they tend to do what they're gonna do and there's a lot of traffic on 195. Is there enough room for a bike lane on, on that part of the road? Well, there is enough room if you, ex, you know, okay fill in the drainage ditch and go over there to that to that side. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, years ago, we had some student projects where they laid the whole thing out. Mm -hmm. So uh, and that wasn't one of yours, was it? No, it wasn't. No, no. <laughs> no. But, you know, years ago, we did have some layouts. And so it's, it is it is very feasible. It's just money. And then coming down, I mean, those that's a steep hill up and a steep hill down, even if you well, once you get to the top of the hill, there are sidewalks. But you don't want a bicycle going flying well, around the sidewalk. Yes, but um, I mean, if in if terms I, of pedestrians and terms of slow bicycles, you could do it. If if I may interject, if that's your plan, then bring them around. I, I don't like the idea personally of bicycles on the sidewalk, especially going downhill. Now you do have enough room to do that if you go around Horse Barn Hill. You don't, but coming straight down 195, I'm sorry, you're asking for big trouble, especially when you reach the intersection at uh, uh, North Eagle Hill. North Eagle Hill. I, I, well, I, I know of which I- I know this is just in the preliminary stage, but does, it, does the pro project that you're talking about just stop at the top of the hill? It stops just past the former, you know, what I used to know is the Ticket Central, the little White House there. On the oh yeah, the police, the old yeah. police. I mean, you could, the old police station. You could bring them through the parking lot, and there's other another way around. But uh, uh, you, if you if if you come off that hill, down that hill to, to mm -hmm. North Eagleville Road, on a bicycle, you have to be fairly. In fact, you have to be fairly, very fairly good. Yeah. For a, a hell of a lot of reasons, that's a bad intersection. Mm -hmm. I would bring them around. Yep, that is part of the discussion that um, the university. So this, so we'll kind of just jump ahead on this one particular project. So, you know, the it was actually identified as part of a rural safety, um, you know, audit of that of that corridor. Mm -hmm. So it was actually identified because they did see some pedestrian, you know, accidents years ago, probably outside the five year look back window. You would typically do for that. And they had identified it as one of the corridors that should try to extend that multi-use path that's on 44. 
Um, so that project was identified through that safety audit was also through Mansfield tomorrow. And then it also made its way into the Eastern Gateway study as well. Right. Um, so right. that was kind of the reason why to at least get it to there, right. recognizing that it's not a, it's not the best access. Well, now that I think about it, if I may interject, please, actually, there is a good way to do it. If you get them to the top of that <laughs> hill, and that's not so bad because of the sight lines, sight lines coming up from four mm -hmm. corners. Uh, if you, if you can find that, that extra Y, then turn them in at horse barn hill and then bring them back again, make that quick, right. Mm -hmm. about 100 yards down the hill, there's a lovely right-hand turn that goes to the back of the dairy bar. Once you get them to the dairy bar, there's two or three ways out. The best way would be to take them. Oh, to, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. So there's to, a road there that yeah. uh, I've forgotten yeah. the name of that road. Yeah, I don't even know if it has it. But that's not too bad. Kind of goes through parking going, lots. Go, by the way, going either way. It, the other thing you have to think about is people with a bicycle coming up the hill. Mm -hmm. That's also troublesome because, anyway, but if you bring them then across to the dairy barn and continue across the parking lot and then bring them out on, uh, what's the road that- It's uh, Horse Barn Hill yeah, Road, right, right, right. Road. And now bring them up to the traffic light. You, you've gotten them into the center of town and then you have a lot of options. Yeah. Well, I, I'll make a note of, of that in the, in the minutes mm -hmm. if it comes up. But just so you know, it's okay if you ride slowly to ride on sidewalks in Mansfield. That's part of the ordinance that was adopted years ago. We just can't be running people over. That's all. With all due respect, it's all right. It's easy to go slow going up a hill. Right. Not easy to go. Yeah. No, I understand. And by the way, we now have a new form of transportation that is oh, yeah. taking over the roads. Yeah. And they're, so, I mean, they whip. And they're, someone's going to get hurt. Yeah. Because they go, they already have, I'm sure. They go about 15 miles an hour. Yeah. And if you have to stop, you continue it. The, the board may stop, but you <laughs> continue it 15 yeah, miles. You made a similar hour. observation to me. <laughs> yeah, it tends to be those electric skateboards that are now, That's they, what I'm they about. either they occupy both spaces yeah. a tremendous well, amount. And I had somebody pass me today in the downtown in a, on an electric scooter. Yes. And you can't hear them. You're right, exactly. That's, That's the other part. One of the worst parts about was the air in their ears. No, because <laughs> there's not. They're electric. They're electric. So you don't really even hear the motor hum or anything like that. Oh, oh, you don't hear them. Yeah, you don't hear them even I, I, I see coming up on you when you're right. walking or doing right. whatever. I mean, right. it's, 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 by the way, it's one of the serious problems with the electric cars. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. But, um, well, all of that, I, you know. They call it active transportation. It's not really active if you're on an electric device, but it's part of that whole thing. That all has to get worked out. Yeah. yeah, has to get worked out. They will be on the bike. While we are talking about the sidewalk, today I was driving on the Gullivel Road, uh, and uh, usually it's a calm, uh, quiet road. But when I was driving, it was I there were few cars coming and going, and few people were uh, uh, jogging on the road. Uh -huh. I thought there's absolutely no place uh, right. on either side. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it becomes a little bit yeah. 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 situation. You end up having to slow. I will have my bike ride. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I actually stopped for a jogger that was on coming today. When I, was, yeah, that's right. yep. I said, well, I, I'm not going to run her off the road. No. I mean, I feel that's bad. my job. I have to stop. Yep. She is a user of that yeah. roadway, just like me. Yeah. Yeah. Gurleyville is not one of my favorite roads to bike on. But sometimes, oh, going down sometimes I have to take it because <laughs> I don't want to go up Wildwood. <laughs> right. You know that that I'm I'm working back to getting in shape to do Wildwood, but right now I'm not there. Probably most of the day Gullivel is okay, uh, but uh, the time when people come uh, back from the work or going mm -hmm. to work, I think that is the time it becomes uh, busy. Busy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, anyway, I don't that's... know if you've seen. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, please, by all means, let's call your agenda and no, we're let's just going to move on to the newer business, which, we're, which is you to Anyways. bring us up to date on the uh, yeah. transportation projects. So, um, yep. So that was one of the projects. Was it's currently being moved around within the within Congress um, as part of the infrastructure packages that are getting you know pulled together. So that's kind of what was identified. We had. Um, 
Senator Courtney came by, or no, Representative Courtney came by and um, provided some of that news that the funding was there and they're currently looking for where it would come from, which, which department it would come out of. Um, we also received a grant for some um, feedback signs. So you'll see those around right now. There's one located on Chafeeville heading uh, southbound in between Gurleyville and Mulberry. Is there a feedback? So it actually has a radar gun in it oh, that oh, basically oh, oh, oh. gives you and says, hey, you're going, you're going over feedback. the speed limit. It starts beeping at, blinking at you and then turns red once you go a little bit faster. And we fortunately have seen some improvement about four to five miles an hour reduction in speeds when we okay. those get deployed does it record it it doesn't record who it just record we get the data from but that's, that's cool. absolutely I correct yep. that's what we found when we put the uh speed humps, speed humps in mm -hmm. we found about five miles yeah about and five we, and when we put up the uh you know, True. we just have a portable one of those things we also found about five yeah because people like me and you we slow down the people we really need to, they don't. They don't. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. But better than that. And it is very, time of day, I would say your 85th percentile changes, but your maximum speeds do not change. They may even go up, Yeah. unfortunately. So we are seeing somebody trying to race the sign, apparently, for some reason. Um, and we also have one deployed over on Pleasant Valley. So we're going to keep moving those around every couple months. I do that on a bicycle coming up from returning home past the school. Yep. Oh, I, yeah. I, I want to see if I can. Connect. Yeah, right in front of the middle school. That's actually great. Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly the same as the middle school. And it actually provides us, we can pull the data and actually get the recording. It does from record. It. That's, that's cool. nice. Yeah, it's, it was a great grant that the Teach Center that's put neat. on. Yep, great. We've got uh, like 20 of those in our building still, if you want one. I could probably snag another. <laughs> really? Yeah. I would not be against that because we've been using them and we have more requests for them. So. Those yeah. are, I, I think, I mean, personally, I, I love those. I see that and I, and I, I it's a check against your own speedometer, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think they're pretty equipped. Really equipped. Yeah, they, they do work, fortunately. Yeah. I mean, at first time period, usually they said about, um, the T2 Center did some studies, you know, on other locations and said about six months. That's about as long as you want to go and then they start getting ignored. Mm -hmm. um, I like it almost that seems a little long. We've had it on Gurleyville Hill for a while, right? Right, exactly. We had it on Gurleyville Hill, probably your favorite place to bike. Maybe not going up, but. Um, and then the other piece we had, um, we also received a LASIP grant to continue the multi use trail from uh, Route 275 towards Max Felix. And actually, it includes a multi use path and a, a full reconstruction of Maple Road. And then we're applying for a the second half of that to go from Max Felix all the way to the middle school and then continue that multi-use path all the way to the middle school at that at that point. Nice. There's another way to do that, Davis Road. We did consider that. Which gets you all again going either way. That's bicycling, that's the desirable way to get off. Yeah, and that's where the bike path goes. Yeah, well, the hill is awful on Maple Road. It's Maple awful. Road needs some help. So if you can get the grant. To help Maple Road, then yeah, yeah. I think people. Then. Yeah, it's your point. I think people will continue to use that Davis Road as the bicycle, like the avid bicyclists will use. Um, but it, what we have observed is we see a lot of off the road or run off the road type of accidents at a couple locations because the radii are pretty. They meet the radius for the speed limit that's in place. However, people don't travel that speed limit or remotely. So they're tight. Correct on the horizontal. So that's what we kind of want to start to address on that roadway. So we did receive a grant for the first part portion of it that is funded. So we're currently working through the funding mechanisms associated with that. And then we're applying um, in January for to try to see if we can get a second half of that grant. And, so, and that grant's coming from who? LOTSIP. And oh, that's through the that's CR Todd. Yeah. Um, and you probably know this. Not everybody does, but one of the more serious bike accidents that the town has had in the last five years or so was on Maple Road. I was on the scene of that. I was meeting with a contractor and you know, heard the kid get hit. It was yeah. horrible. Yeah. That was the high school kid, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. But I mean, that's terrible, but it also is a data point for reconstructing Correct. the road and making it safer all the way around. Yeah, it was, it was unfortunate. There was debris in the road and the bicyclist went around it 
And just at that exact moment, the vehicle was coming behind them too. It was a very unfortunate thing. Yeah, very. Well, that road is dangerous. So we'll say, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, every road's dangerous. That's what happens with accidents. Yeah. Everything's yeah. fine. Cell phones. That's all of a sudden. <laughs> right. And I can tell you that for myself, I've almost 100% switched off onto the rail trails. Yeah. And I'm, I can't take another hit. Yeah. And I, I go out on, I, I've, in, in this entire season, I don't think I've been out more than three times on a road. On the road, yeah. That's and fair. I, yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah. risk reward is not there anymore. Yeah. Anything else on the? Yeah, project? we've got a few more. We also, I think I mentioned this last time. We received, we did receive a grant as well through. Um, I'll have to double check the mechanism, but it basically will allow us to complete the downtown loop. So this would be what we call from on Route 275 from Maple Road to Separatist. So it'll take that component. So that'd be uh, right at the base of that large hill. And then we also have one on Hunting Lodge Road, what they call extension or number two, however you want to indicate it. It's by the meeting house. So basically it's the connection between oh, yeah. Separatist Road and North Eagleville Road. Yeah, right. So we got funding for those two projects. For what the, was the first project. one? I didn't catch that. South Eagleville Road, South Eagle Road from, route, from oh, Separatist yeah. Road okay. to Maple Road to make that one last connection oh, yeah. where our water and sewer is located right. there. Right. Um, South Eagleville yep. from Maple to Separatist. And then we also have you know, we were notified that from by the DOT that they're going to be installing um, the rectangular rapid flashing beacons. So the ones that are located in front of Liberty Bank, they're installing those at three locations in downtown along Route 195. Nice. Uh, one by Willowbrook Road. I don't know the, what you're referring to. So the one right at Liberty Bank. There's a push button that gives oh, you. Oh, it doesn't those stop the lights. traffic, but it does give you flashing lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You couldn't talk them into like uh, one of those hawk signals where it actually stops the yeah. traffic. That's This is what they kind of settled on, unfortunately. Our, our DOT just, they don't like to stop traffic. No, no they don't. No, is this, is this at the head of Hank's Hill Road or is this closer to Liberty Bank? So we've had that, dis we ch we're reaching out to them because right now it's a yellow flashing light and what they, there, we had tried to get a second rectangle, one of these installed under the um, Flaherty Road um, Liberty Bank extension where we extended the walkway that in those two directions. Their response was the yellow blinking light should suffice. Okay. Um, so, which we don't disagree, we don't agree with, but right now they're with a, there's a new um, director of their engineering department. So we're gonna reach out again and see if we can. So where are, the, where, are the, where are the locations? Where so we have for them? Willowbrook uh, right across the street from that. So it's basically any mid block crossing, which isn't signalized. So it would be Willowbrook. It would be in front of Price Chopper here in the town hall. And then they're also uh, added, making some changes to the signage in front of Liberty Bank to, to bring it, you know, they've made some edits to the MUTCD. So they're gonna change a couple of things there. So those are the three locations, the three mid-block crossings. Not the one at like EO Smith into the Starbucks? Yeah, I'm sorry, yes, that one as well. Oh, okay. Yep, that is the one. So they're all on 195? Yes. Okay, in the downtown, yep. greater downtown. Interestingly area. enough, I find that from 275, at least to Dog Lane, but probably further, the traffic is very polite to mm -hmm. pedestrians. Within the village itself, right. you see people all the time trying to cross, even without a crosswalk, and people are very responsive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think it's because the you know, you feel like you're in a confined space. And, and you're, you're, you're in a slow pace anyway. Yeah, right. You're not going to get a whole lot further by right. waiting. Right. It, it does feel like well, a, at least the local people, because most of the traffic is local people, they are aware that this is the school and yeah, students, school high school is there. That's right. That's right. Uh, you have to be careful with this. I, at least, I, my wife always reminds me that. Yeah. Yep, take it slow. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, especially in the dark times of the year. Oh, yeah, yeah. Correct. Dark time and people, older people like us, who vision is not all the correct. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's always no reflective. And, and <laughs> the kids wearing the dark jacket oh, yeah. in the dark oh, yeah. becomes difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you got any more? That's I it. I should do it for now. Okay, great. Nice. I, got, I got five of them. That's going to be. <laughs> Hard to write the minutes. There's a lot of stuff here. Yeah, we, can, we can always chat afterwards. All right. Um, 
So then active transportation, I didn't bring a map, darn it, I forgot. Um, we have completed a uh, bike map. I, you saw one, there's a, a big 24 by 36 bike map uh, of, the, of the bike routes and points of interest in town. And then we decided to make a foldable one uh, it folds up, it's a 13 by 19 and it folds up. And it has, I mean, when, when Bike Mansfield and, and other people wanna have a tables at our various functions, people, a few people come up and say, I just moved into town. It's a long time. You know, where are the, where are the uh, bike routes and where, where can I ride? And so that, we put that together. We got that uh, with help from the engineering department and uh, Clow Harbor, the engineering company over there by uh, the play, play people on um, uh, Royce Circle. They, they did the actual uh, CAD work uh, for free. It was you know, great because something like that would cost thousands of dollars to, to actually do. So we have them. We're, um, we're distributing them. We printed 100 first. And we got some feedback. We made a few corrections and we printed another hundred and we're using those now. We handed them out at the festival. Uh, we're giving them to the uh, bike shop to hand out and, and other places. Uh, and we're actually using them to send to our bike Mansfield business members saying, you know, here you're listed on the map. Would you like to renew your membership? So it helps us. You know, another place to hand those out might be to uh, Scotts or Pedal Power or Romantic. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Good, good point. I will, I'll make a note of that. Christy, are you able to see this on the shared screen? The uh, map that uh, Lana is referring to. Okay. I just see the agenda. Okay, let me see if I can share this one. Can you share. But is it the folded map? Is that what you're talking about? That's not the folded one. That's the big one. Okay. Because you gave me a copy of that at Mansfield thing. But. Okay, good. Good. Is this the one you're referring to? Uh, yeah. It's got our bike Mansfield business members presented by CHA. And then we have the points of interest on the back. I side. think that's the older one. Okay. Because this, this little piece here of Discovery Drive. Yep, that's missing. Um, we put that in, in a, as a correction, as a okay. yellow route, which is other popular bike routes. It's okay. not an official town route, mm -hmm. but we wanted people to know that, you know, that's a place where people ride. Mm -hmm. and, and like uh, Bassett's Bridge is that way too, because of all the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the uh, rides that happen and end up on ba uh, Bassett's Bridge. So anyway, um, that, is, that is something that we have completed. Um, we haven't done a full printing yet. We've done a hundred and then we're doing another hundred, but eventually we'd like to print a bunch of them and just have them at the library and wherever else, you know, but for <laughs> now we're only giving them to people who really want them. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's good. Um, it's great, Lana. It's actually very useful. I was wondering, are you? Is it going to be online in a PDF somewhere too for people to access? Because then you maybe don't need to print them if it's available online, where people could access it on their phones or something even. Well, we do have it as a PDF, and um, I don't have it separate. Both maps are on the same PDF, so I haven't se we haven't separated. That's a good idea. Uh, we you know we haven't thought of that. Um, so that's something we had to we had to look at because we could make it available on the website. Yeah, I'd be happy to, if that's something your 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 group is willing to allow us to do. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Did yeah. Cuff provide like the line mark too, so it could be GIS. Yeah, it is. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. If we did it electronically, you might have to modify it a little bit mm -hmm. for people to use. Because right now, as a folding map. You open it up and you see, you know, the legends and here's how you get to this and so on and so forth. If you if you just have the map, you kind of want to be able to click on something and go right to the explanation. Mm -hmm. 
of okay. what that something is. And that okay. would take a little a little programming. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, that would take the place mm -hmm. of, of a folded map. I mean, mm -hmm. us old people, we like the folded maps. But Definitely. It, and to bring it with you on the bicycle. Yeah, yeah. right. But I mean, but uh, can do it on a phone. That's my uh, my sixteen year old grandson would not touch it. You know, <laughs> if it's not electronic, he doesn't want anything to do with it. So that's a good point. That'd be a, a next a next project. It'll also save printing costs, and you know, then you never have to throw one away because if somebody wants it, they'll right. just. If you want to revise it, you can revise it very simply. Yes. So that's a, that's a good point. I'll look into that. All right, then I already mentioned that the uh, BFC renewal is now due September 1st in the fall of 2022. Um, we'll be working on that in Bike Mansfield. We have basically many of the same people that did the original application, David Palmer and Corey, uh, Corey Clark and uh, Todd O'Keefe worked on it before so we we can probably reassemble our group to help with that <coughs> and then um Corey clark who is now on the board of directors of bike mansfield is also leading what she calls the bicycle working group at yukon and they're trying to get yukon to be more bicycle friendly and uh She's been meeting their, their, uh, they met right through the pandemic virtually, this working group, and they have good representation. They've got the architect people, they've got the police, they've got uh, recreation, you know, and uh, there are a lot of things that are happening at UConn having to do with bicycling. But what they don't have is a good tie in with the administration. And uh, the administration just changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all the letters and stuff we did with the previous one, we had to rekindle and try to get, you know, to the new uh, administration. But that's what they're missing because although the architectural people are working on it, the construction and architectural, they have a uh, RFP that's going out for a bicycle plan, bicycle and pedestrian plan for Yukon. But I don't think it's going to happen until the fall the next fall when they're going to uh, hire somebody. You know, there's always a funding wait on stuff like that at UConn, unless, unless the administration really wants it, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, they are making progress. You know, last year or the year before, they did a whole bike parking analysis of bike racks mm -hmm. on, on UConn. And they figured out they were approximately 1,000 bike racks short. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. According to guidelines for how many students and residents and so on. So they have a, an uphill climb. But eventually, um, and a, they just wrote another letter to the new president. Eventually, someone in the administration is going to grab this and say, if we're bicycle friendly, we're going to get more applications because other universities are bicycle friendly. Mm -hmm. So so hopefully that will gain some traction this year. Um, the Transportation Advisory Board at UConn never even met during the pandemic. And they were, uh, they were the bicycle working groups kind of, um, they were a subcommittee that, that gave them some mm -hmm. traction, but then uh, that group didn't even meet. So anyway. It's an uphill battle. Corey Clark is heading that bicycle working group. And if anybody wants to talk to her, or if you know people that are interested, let me know. I can get you her email address. OK, then I got a note from the town clerk. Uh, I've got a look here about uh, some of our members. Uh, were, um, their terms are up in November. And the question is, do they want to continue? I think you did that in email, Lon. 
Did I? Mm. I mean, there was a whole email that you emailed all of us, and then most of us, I think, responded. Right. I, I'm pretty sure Mike was one. I think Herman was the other. And it might have been you, Christine, being. Yes. That's why I remember it because I, I responded and you said okay. And then I think there was something else that said that's okay. I don't know. All right. Well when was that sent with Lauren? You know, November. I November. Last November. No, this this we haven't well, reached November. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I think that's when you that's when your the term is up. Are. Let me see if I can find it here. Either from Sarah Ann, from Stephanie or Monica. Yeah, perhaps. it was definitely Sarah Ann from, from uh I don't the remember one I got is from Sherry. I don't remember receiving it. I was I didn't. Yeah, I don't think I sent it to everybody. I didn't I, return for some reason. Me. Let's see if I can find one of her. Here we go. I'm looking for it too. I thought it was in my email. It might have been attached to one of the other emails that going around about the meeting. Well, do we really need to see it? To no, we just don't. Respond? So in the event that the uh, renewals are those are you three people, um, are, do you have any objection to continue? I'm good. Okay. All right. Christine? Yeah, that's fine. Could you, would you be willing to continue on the Yes, I would. Yes, I would be. So if I got, I'll find it. If I've got those three, I'll report back to that. If it's somebody else, we'll have to contact them. Okay. Any other business? Yeah. Uh, is it too early, or shall we think about start thinking about the? Uh, online infrastructure money that is becoming available from the federal government is going to be available pretty soon. Mm -hmm. so are we going to be affected? I mean, mm -hmm. should, should we start thinking about that? Or uh, so that walk, one of the walk we were talking about earlier, that's getting funded through that mechanism, but also through the ARPA money that's being currently circulated. I think the town's receiving about seven million dollars um, from the federal government. There was a survey that was circulated maybe about a month ago starting to talk about, you know, what are some of the priorities? And I mean, if there's something that the committee, you know, wants to kind of contemplate or report back that we can provide to the, to the, to the town manager or director of public works or anything like that, if you have some ideas that would you want to pursue? Well, yeah. a lot of the things you talked about connect, making the connections going around the uh, Yukon mm -hmm. and the, the uh, project out to four corners, those, those are all things we would certainly support. Yeah. Um, 
Um, whatever happened with the um, sidewalk project in um, store center, or not store center, downtown Mansfield, right uh, by 89? Yep, so the, there's the walkway that goes from 195 out to Southeast School. Yeah. Yeah, they, so that's, that's been it. completed. There's, but the 195 part isn't paved. Yeah, so there was this discussion. I mean, this is during Lon's duration that there was some the historical people didn't want it paved. Mm -hmm. you know, that's part of a historic district. Mm -hmm. So it was gravel, mm -hmm. but um, parts of it aren't even passable now. <laughs> yeah, so we actually went before the historical commission, I want to say about two years ago, and they authorized, they, they agreed that you know, having the gravel is really not a great, is a maintenance concern. Right. And it's, it disappears very quickly over time through one growing season. If yeah. you don't refresh it, it's gone. Um, so they kind of concurred and were willing to allow us to pave it. So oh. as we start to, you know, we could probably consider that as maybe one of the projects that maybe comes out of that ARPA money is yeah. to try to complete the pavement of that. Oh, that's a great they shovel, great shovel ready. It's a great it, exactly. The, the, <laughs> the material's already there. We ended up doing a short, portion to at least the bus stop right that was right. we said well we should the have at least go to the bus right. stop at that point yeah so oh, that's a good yes that's a, i'll put in the minutes and you should add that in because um there were a lot of people using that mm -hmm. uh after it first went in mm -hmm. and i think that's fallen off a little bit because now it's not as accessible as it used to be mm -hmm. good. good one All right, if there's nothing else, we can all go home. It's uh, 747. Thank you all for coming. I'm sorry the WRTD thing didn't work out, but what, what, what I will do is I will query, get back to Linda Haveman and say, we never got anything. She'll put something in writing and I'll send it to everybody, mm -hmm. okay? Did you still want to have one more meeting? I think we have one more meeting on our schedule. We're year. supposed to have. Uh, no, this is this is the October meeting, which is the first month of the quarter. We've been meeting quarterly. Mm, that's correct. So the next meeting wouldn't be till January. So we'll have to maybe circulate something to you to get the meeting schedule for next year. Oh yeah, right. So we'll have to do that for the 2022 meeting schedule for um, the clerks. So we'll circulate that, that as well. Uh, formula is the second second first day. Mm -hmm. Second Thursday meeting, right? You still okay? Yeah. That's what we've been doing. And this was a special meeting yeah, so because I had a conflict on the previous one. Oh, yeah. So we'll prepare that well, of our office. Second Thursday, I mean, when well, we, can, comes, then we, we haven't actually, no, Check we, can't, we can't. We're not technically supposed to act on something that isn't on the agenda because this is a special meeting. Correct. So, we can't really add that to the agenda, so oh, we'll we'll do it. Right. We'll do it at the January meeting. I'll I'll send them something saying second Thursday, and then we'll ratify it in January. Okay. Okay. All right. All those opposed? We're adjourned. Hi. Uh, thanks for accommodating my uh, stay stay at home feelings. <laughs> Enjoy those fuzzy slippers. <laughs> right. See you later. Great. Thank you.